so Pat Irwin, I'm Aaron Cronus from the Musicians Insider, and this is season two of the Musicians Insider. I've got some things blocking it a little here, but um, I'd like to welcome you to my my podcast, and I'd love to hear some things about your career, what you've been up to. I know you have a lot of bands you've been in, ranging from doing cartoon stuff, voiceover, or it's not voiceover, but cartoon music and music for shows and being part of the B-52s and being part of just a lot of things that are part of culture. So I'd love to hear any advice you have for musicians today. And also just tell us a little bit of what you've been up to and let's hear what you're doing. Uh, well, okay, that's a, that's a mouthful. <laughs> uh, well, any advice? Uh, be yourself. That's, that's about the long and short of it right now unless we get more specific, but, you know, be yourself. Um, I'm uh, lucky enough to be a performing musician and a composer for film and television as well. I recently, most recently did the score for Dexter New Blood. Uh, prior to that, I've done shows such as Nurse Jackie, uh, Bored to Death, The Good Cop, Feed the Beast. Um, and I've scored cartoons like um, Rocco's Modern Life and Pepper Ann, A Little Curious, uh, Class of 3000 with Andre 3000. I contributed to SpongeBob. Oh, that's great. Pants. Um, and I've played in bands. I currently have a band called Sus, which is um, an ambient country band, which I'm just crazy about. Uh, we have a record out on Northern Spy, a double record, self-titled record called Sus. When did uh, it come out? When When did it come out? Um, well, more than a couple months, about a couple months ago. But we just finished a really, we played the Biggers Festival down in Knoxville. Very cool. And um, just played uh, a really fantastic series here in my neighborhood in New York City, where we played an individual side of, of the album on four consecutive Friday nights. And we just finished that uh, last week. And I'm preparing for a concert in two weeks down at the Howell Gallery in lower Manhattan. So how was it coming out of the pandemic for you? I know that like a lot of musicians, like it screwed everything up. So like for you, what, what, what going in, what happened and coming out, did things change? And are you better off now or any, any stories from that? Or did you learn anything? Uh, well, uh, you, you know, um, Sus made a couple records in there. Sadly, a member of the band died. Wow. So that was hard. Um, I also teach school. I teach at NYU and Brooklyn College. So That's cool. um, we managed to keep cl classes in session over Zoom. But everything changed for me as far as I'm concerned when we got to meet back together um, and see each other in person. Dexter New Blood was scored completely over uh social distancing um i i was really happy to see that you did that by the way i watched the whole show the whole series cool. i thought i thought it was exceptionally done well the music fit i never noticed anything off about anything um i thought they did a really good job of conveying a way to bring the story forward and they even had people acting as ghosts and things i thought it was well done and i don't watch a whole lot of those other shows um, I didn't watch the cartoon that you, the Rocky one, because that was kind of in the time when I wouldn't have been watching cartoons. So I was trying to figure out what have I seen of your stuff. And um, the, the Dexter show, I loved this first Dexter and I thought it was over. It was nice to see it come back. Is there going to be another one? <laughs> uh, there's a couple ideas in the works, whether or not, you know, with um, the writer's strike and everything that's going on, we'll have to see. Yeah, I feel you. I lived in L.A. for 13 years. I'm now back in Canada, uh, north of Toronto. After the pandemic hit, I came home to be near fam. So 
I do have a lot of understanding about some of the LA personalities and things that happen that lifestyle. And I did a record there uh, myself, which came out in November, but um, I'm learning how to do digital marketing and promotion for music is not easy. Like I've been doing it for lawyers and I do SEO and things like that. But when it comes to yourself, it's sometimes it's the hardest client to, to have. So um, if you're a, a new artist, where would you focus your efforts? If you happen to have any suggestions on that? <laughs> Well, what do you mean new artist? Well, so I'm not like, I'm I'm 47. I've been doing music my whole life, but nobody knows who I am. I spent a lot of money built doing a record in Los Angeles and I finished it and we released it. But when we released it, I didn't really have a lot of budget to promote the hell out of it. So I did shoot a video and do some things. But like now no one's really wanting to put it on their playlist because it's not new. And so it's like, well, what do you do now? Do I have to do new album? It seems like everyone's asking for new material. So it's like, well, where do you be? You just spent all this money on a record just because when we first released it, no one added it because no one knows who we are. Now what? You know, it's like, well, this is it getting expensive, right? So it's just, it's a frustrating sort of time, but it's also a really good time where you can use things like TikTok and the internet to get exposure without a gatekeeper if you do it right. Um, so we're just trying to like figure out ways to do this as an artist with, with, you know, you have talent. So you're, talking about, you're a performing artist. You're you've yeah. got a band. Yeah. Or or no. not. Like I mean, I perform with Ableton Live and a drummer, or no drummer and just me and the computer. But I played the horseshoe in Toronto like that. And that's hard to book. They don't want me back unless I can fill the room, you know, but I can play at any level with the equipment we use. You know, it's like we're we're there. But um when you say full band, it is a full band setup, but I'm I, I my bass player is a keyboard my rhythm guitar player is on tracks and uh <laughs> it, it's like how do you get four people in the same room together at this point even <laughs> well um, being in a band is hard yeah uh, I played the horseshoe that was the first club I played at I believe in uh, Toronto back good in room the yeah good room they're real nice to me I shot my video there so they let me do a couple shows there but I'm like I need to have a bigger following before I play there again. Do, do um, you know Gary Top or Gary Cormier, Gary Top? No, I just deal with Craig. Well, you should check out a book about Gary Top, T-O-P-P. -P, and he okay. was the, originally booked The Horseshoe. And, I'll, uh, I'll put a link to it in here. <laughs> yeah, you should. He's got a great uh, graphic novel out. I don't think I have it here. No, it's not here. But um, I'm still in touch with him. He He, he booked my band uh the first time we played in toronto in 1979 and he booked the b-52s through the years very cool partner. is the b-52s done or is there any of that still happening at all no the kate fred and cindy are in las vegas as we speak very cool um it's good to see they're still going um what uh are you focusing your efforts now on sus and how do you spell it Sus is spelled S-U-S-S. -S. You can look us up at www.susband.com. Okay, we'll put that up here for sure. And is there a meaning behind the, the name or anything you want to tell me about the band or the project or the other band members? Sure. Um, our bio is on the website. So it's pretty easily accessible. Um, it's we we kind of loosely refer to it as ambient country music um it was it started out as five of us who all sort of had compatible and similar tastes in music um with a love for eno and enio morricone i think the 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 original idea was what would it be like if Eno produced Enio Morricone um, on a spaghetti western soundtrack. So, uh, and we made a record and it blew up on Spotify and we made another record and now we're on our fourth record. So um, a lot of artists want to know, how do you do that? And And I guess, you know, if you have a label that's got, you know, promotional ties to different playlists and things do you happen to have any idea as to what it was that got it to blow up on spotify now i get that the music's got to be good 
but say you have great music how how did it blow up on spotify do you happen to know where it went big first what country or no we got lucky and it got on a couple playlists very cool so you did it right it's hard people are trying and there's a lot of companies out there that are selling artists these playlisting kind of things that aren't real so it's so hard for people to get past that level of is it real kind of thing you know yeah one of the members of the band bob holmes a very good friend of mine wonderful collaborator he plays uh, a variety of instruments but primarily mandolin um and guitar he has a podcast and a Spotify podcast called um, Ambient Country, which you can check that out. Very cool. I'll and get the link to other, it. Other bands. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. And he plays other bands that have sort of a similar um, leaning disposition. And that's what you have to do. See, I started a podcast myself because I want to figure out what do musicians need to do. So I let's figure it out this way. You know, there's a lot of different methods for it. Um, some people aren't as comfortable talking on camera, but now it's like, I don't know, like even TikTok, we have a group of guitar players. If you ever want to come and check it out, the hashtag is Mad Men of Metal. And we just get guitar players all over the world. It doesn't have to be metal. It can be, you can play cool. uh, harmonica. You can sing. It doesn't matter. But it's like a support. It's like a support group for guitarists. And I'm really pushing it a bit. I'm not, I don't own it. I just joined it and they're great people. And, um, Cool. We we go live on Friday nights on TikTok usually or Saturday. So it's you just join the hashtag. There's different squares, kind of like Zoom, but the person playing is generally the biggest square, and then you take turns. Fun. So, yeah. Um. What's so? What's been interesting to you with all the new technology lately? And I don't have a list of questions. I'm just asking you what I think is a good question. Um. <laughs> well, I mean, the fact of the matter is, is like technology is like a steam engine. And it's changing all the time. Uh, we can now make, you know, Sus made our first, all of our records here in my studio. I recorded all of Dexter here in my studio. Um, I'm in, you know, a, 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 a industrial part of uh, Queens. I'm looking at the 59th Street Bridge right over here. Um, you know, it's like, you can do it yourself. It used to be everybody wanted to know how do you get in the room? How do I how do I get my foot in the door? Well, now everybody's in the room. We're all in the room. How do you get noticed now that you're in the room? And that's what you're talking about. And I think anything that you can do, I, I'm a I'm a big fan of playing live and building up a following. And it takes time and it and it and it's and it's hard. A band like the B-52s have been doing it since the mid-70s, late 70s, building up goodwill. That's 40 some odd years. I mean, that's a long time. Those songs have seen a lot of a lot of airplay in a lot of places, and they've been performed very, very many times. And still you still have to keep doing it to stay in the public eye, or else people forget that's about right. it. That's right. That's right. You know, I mean, the bottom line is you have to want to do it. Yeah. I mean, you really have to want to do it. It's like you have to want to do it. It's like you don't have a choice. That's well, I yeah, I, I, I just I see a lot of and I do this myself. I put a lot of effort into stuff and then you don't see the fruit of it because it doesn't pan out sometimes. Like you just don't have the audience or you don't have the proper promotion. or You don't have the money to promote it or something like, yeah, play live. Sure. Where? You know, like I what I'm trying to do now, get on in some sort of tour in the U.S. and buy onto a tour or something. I don't know. To me, that's the only way you can really get noticed is by opening for someone. You know, it's like, well, I don't know. I played in a mechanic's garage two doors down. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have I snow and ice? I planned it. I planned. I played an abandoned warehouse a couple blocks over here. A friend well, of mine who's won two Emmy Awards, you know, four Emmy Awards, plays every Wednesday night in a bar. And you you're know, in Queens. You're in Queens. That's that's yeah. awesome. So I I done Manhattan. I actually lived down near the left at the Bull, kind of on Water Street for a bit. That's down a crazy city. 
uh, southern tip of Manhattan by the Staten Island Ferry there. Oh, okay. Yeah, just to, to Water Street. Anyway, I, I love that. That was amazing. I was only there for a couple months, like three months living in New York City and seeing how much it costs to live there and, and very, very sort of hot in the summer. And I, I really liked California weather better. But now I'm in Ontario, back in Canada. We were just at the cottage all weekend and up in the beautiful lakes. And you can't beat that in the summer. But we just had a winter of frozen hell. So I don't know. I miss California, but I'll get back there. Um, New York, though, that's that's interesting city. It, it, it's definitely a lot of opportunity for you when it comes to music. There's so many places to play. Uh, Canada is not so much. So I think I just need to get out a little more. But that's just how it is. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean... I mean, sure, you can open up for somebody and you can go out and do that, but build up a following locally. That's my big advice. Yeah, I know that if you got to be big in your own backyard first, right? So you got to figure out how do you do that. Um, I mean, that's what the Ramones did in the, the Talking Heads. They made a Talking Heads were neighbors of mine a couple blocks away, and that's where they made a couple of their records. They found a place to play CBGBs and yeah. made it their own. There's a lot to talk about. What would you like to talk about? Something that you're promoting or that you're working on right now that you want to get out to the world. I'd like to hear more about what you want to tell us right now because you've given me some interesting tidbits here. So I thought let's give you a chance to tell me anything you want to talk about. Um, well, I mean, I, I love the band I'm in called Sus. And I'll just leave it at that. That's awesome there's to a, love the band you're in. There's a, a Rocco's Modern Life was a fairly popular cartoon. Um, and there's a new digital release of the soundtrack for Rocco, which you can get it on any of the playlists like Spotify or Apple or Amazon. Is it out now? Yep. Okay, I'll put a link to it. That's awesome. Well, that'd be great. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, always, man. It's And that's the thing, right? It's all about sharing with people. That's right. And sharing, like if you share, you will get more. Kind of what you tell children, but with the internet, that's kind of how it works, you know. Um, I come that's from right. an I come from an SEO world. I was an SEO director in California, but you don't rank first for good music or something. So it's hard for musicians, so, you know, helping lawyers get number one in Google, and then switching to like trying to help yourself do it in music is a totally different vibe. Social media is kind of where it's at. Um, like I said, do do you use what platforms are you on? Um, I have a Facebook page, um, Pat Irwin Music. Um, I'm on Instagram as Pat Irwin Music and uh, Twitter. I'll put it all right there. Do you use Great, you. do you use TikTok or Snap or you, so? Do you have a, and you said you have a YouTube channel. I do, but I don't really use it very much. But I I do have a YouTube channel. Um, you know, I I make music all the time. I make it anywhere I can and anyhow. That's um, great. And um, like I said, I'm I'm writing music right now, putting the finishing touches on a couple pieces that I'll be playing for the first time at an art gallery down in Lower Manhattan called Howl. Howl happening. So Lower Manhattan is that like Tenth Street or below? It's on Bowery, right across from CBGB's, as a matter of fact. Cool. 150 Bowery. Um, cool. And, uh, you know, I think, I, I don't know. I mean, just obviously social media is important. And you can build a following on social media. But the music has to be good. Well, you have the thing is, if you have good music... And you have all this good music, but no fans. What do you do, right? And that's kind of where we feel like we've done. Like, I know they always say, well, maybe your music isn't that good. It's like, well, no, no one's heard it. You know, that's the issue that I find a lot of my friends and in our industry is running into is that, like, nobody wants to hear it unless everyone wants to hear it, right? Unless everyone's telling you, listen to this new hot track from so-and-so. Like, it's almost like everyone's saying, listen to my track and no one's listening to anyone else's. Yeah, well, no doubt about it. It's a tough, thankless business. Everyone's a producer, you know? Well, like, maybe maybe so. So musically, um, your main instruments, do you do you, what instruments do you prefer the most to play and write with? And what what do you what do you generally use in the studio? Well, um, 
I started out playing clarinet and I play guitar. I play guitar and keyboards in the B-52s. Um, if you look at the Love Shack video, I'm playing keyboards. Um, That's awesome. <laughs> uh, of course, in the studio, so much of it is driven key from keyboards into the uh, digital audio workstation. So, But I do play piano and, and organ. I play keyboards on the Rockless Modern Life soundtrack. What kind of guitars do you play? Oh, well, I play mostly Fenders. Um, but I also have a thing for Tyscos. I don't know if you know what they are. I just got this this one from my repairman. Oh, cool. I get to see it. Awesome. I love this, this stuff. Is, this is a really cool looking guitar. Um, oh, wow. Four pickups? Yep, Tysco Shark Fin. That is awesome. The E, the low E is a bass string below E below uh, A below E. And then it's an E octave A octave up. And then um then it's regular tuning, but this is a really a uh, cool guitar. I've done yeah. a low bass string on my guitar before, kind of Van Halen style a little bit. That's fun. I like the I like the pickups. That's interesting. Yeah, I got another one here, the cool a cool one. Um, so I have a, a lot of these Tyscos. This is a. Um, I would just set these up, and behind me, and have a couple amplifiers, and get the feedback going for the soundtrack to Dexter. So we had this like bed of feedback humming. Uh, so that that was fun. I like how Satriani does that on Flying in a Blue Dream. What's that? I like how Joe Satriani does that on Flying in a Blue Dream at the beginning. Just oh, kind yeah. of holding, getting the feedback to come. Yeah. Just like hold a G in the right spot. That's really cool, man. Um, yeah, I, you know, I played clarinet myself. I played first B-flat clarinet. I was third, then second, and then first before I was like 15. And I made it to the concert band in our high school. And then I switched schools because they wouldn't let our heavy metal band play. And because I switched schools, we got to play. Uh, yeah, right. back in, so that worked. Um, That's a beautiful instrument. Well, dude, it's very, very cool um, to speak to you, Pat. Um, I, I really appreciate you coming on Musicians Insider. And, I, you know, I want to invite you back anytime you have something new going on or if there's a, a, a website that you've created to help your students at school or something interesting. Um, and you're teaching, you said. Uh, how, how often are you teaching? Is that just on the side a little bit, or is that quite a lot? Well, no, I teach at, at NYU. Uh, I teach masters, the ma masters, um, and Brooklyn College. I teach their master students as well at the Fierstein Graduate School of Cinema, which you can put a link into that if you'd like. Um, For sure, the Fierstein Graduate School of Cinema, and I teach. Uh, a seminar in film and television composition. And oh, wow. I teach a seminar in, um, it's called Scoring for Motion Pictures and New Media. And we have game, video game composers and um, other new media out, uh, outlets. We, we, we touch on all those there. And so these are all masters. They're master's students. And it's a, a, a wonderful, wonderful experience for me. And they want to learn this like this. They've weeded out all the people that don't want to learn. And these people are paying to be there. The, the fact that you do all this education stuff is very cool. I think it's important to always me be too. learning. Like, I, I'm, I'm kind of nerdy, um, but you're always learning. Like, have you gotten into any of the AI, using any of the AI stuff? No, I haven't. It, it can be helpful, like say you need to write 10 tweets to promote your album, you can have it write them for you and they'll write them better than you would. So I think it's helpful for things like that. Um, I haven't tried writing music yet with it. I've had it do some melodies, but I have never turned them on and listened to them yet because I was just messing around with it. I think I'd rather write my own songs for now. <laughs> do you have any advice, however, for like, there's a lot of musicians that are, they write like me, we, I might make my own records. 
but I'm not right now recording for film and television as a composition person or as a composer. I have friends that do it really well. Um, I'm sure you do it really well too. Do you have any advice for someone that if they wanted to get into that world, where to begin? Because I know my issue was no one wants to license my songs that are already done. They want to go out and curate something for a music supervisor role, like where they pick the songs. So then they go to the people they know already. Well, you have to be positive. Let's, let's be really clear about this. And lead with a positive. Not stuff like nobody wants to hear this or nobody blah, blah, blah. You well, know, I, yeah, let's, let's, if you're pitching someone, hell no. <laughs> yeah, let's let's just start there. Um, yeah, I may come across a little and, jaded. It's okay. I've just had a long weekend. <laughs> Yeah, all right. Well, fair enough. But you, if you're asking for my advice, mm -hmm. um, lead with a positive. And meet people, if you're wanting to be, make music for film and television, meet people who are making film and television. So find a filmmaker. Go to a film festival. Go to... I, you know, met... I picked up the book and started to meet people making cartoons. I cold called Disney, you know, put yourself out there. And, you know, I just, I had just attended a beautiful um, music festival here in New York, put on by the Bang in a Can uh, group. And it was called the Long Play Festival and it was all in Brooklyn. It was glorious. There were Pulitzer Prize winners musicians from all around the world, meeting one another, doing things, putting themselves out there. And it's hard, but um, you know, that's how you, how you do it. Yeah, I've been uh, attending the Indie 101 uh, conference last week here in Toronto. And it's, I'm gonna put a link to that cause they're really good. And it's kind of a local conference for musicians to, to try to at least get together in some capacity. Um, and we have Canadian Music Week and, and North by Northeast and things like that as well. And I always suggest that people go to fantastic. all that stuff. Fantastic. That's fantastic. That's great. So, well, that's cool, yeah. man. Okay, yeah. well, um, is I, I just wanted to say, like I said earlier, I, I do really appreciate you coming on here and talking to me and my audience. And we're still I learning. We're, you having me. we're in season two. I will promote this. I'll put it all over YouTube and I'll put it everywhere I can. I'm musiciansinsider.com. And I'll do the same. <laughs> Great. And uh, what is your main website for you? Or if someone wants to contact uh, Mine is patterwinmusic.com. Okay. I'll put that down here along with all the other things we talked about. And, um, you know, is there any uh, releases coming up that you haven't mentioned or anything coming up that you want to tell me about or any dates that are no, important? No, um, I've covered it. The Rocco's Modern Life is available. In the fall, I'm hoping for a physical release with the theme that I did with Kate and Fred from the B-52s, as well as additional material. That was an amazing band. Um, you'll have to hear that music. Yeah. Uh, and uh, no, this covers it. Well, that's great, Pat. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. Um, you have a very interesting career. Um, you know, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll talk again. I like talking guitars and things like that. It's always fun. So yeah, I love that. Great to have you on the Musicians Insider. Feel free to email me anytime about anything you have. You and got that's, it. That's Thank it. I'm Cronus. So Thanks, guys. Have a great, wonderful day.